So I'd like to formally welcome John Martin to Central Elementary. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you taking the time out of your, what probably is a busy schedule right now, to come and present. Absolutely. And help our kids engage in citizenship. Um, it's a really valuable time, so I appreciate that. I want to introduce you to um, hopefully several schools that are tuning in um, throughout the Chilliwack School District. Um, camera set up. Yeah, it's camera set up, so if you have seats. Um, I prefer to sit. Good. Yeah, awesome. So Thank over you. to you, John. Thank you. Thanks so much. Good morning. Uh, my name's John Martin. I used to live a few blocks uh, over that way. And uh, my, my wife actually went to this school back in the early 1970s. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's a lot, of, uh, a lot of history here. And uh, this, is a, this is a wonderful neighborhood. And uh, I uh, can't say enough about uh, how appreciative I am to get invited to come today. And I think that this project of being engaged in an election uh, and understanding how elections work is, uh, is so important. And, uh, and, and I, I applaud the, uh, the, the school for, uh, for doing that. And I, I wish I knew as much about politics uh, when, I was, uh, when I was your age. Uh, so I'm uh, John Martin. I'm running for the uh, BC Liberal Party. Uh, that is the uh, party that has been in government for uh, the past uh, 12 years or so. And uh, I'll just very briefly talk about our, uh, our platform because I'm sure uh, more of that will come out uh, when we get into some, uh, some questions. But the, uh, the biggest uh, thing in our platform is that we want a strong economy and a secure tomorrow. So what does that actually mean with a strong economy? Well, we all want the very best in education, in health care, roads, all of those services. But they all cost, and they cost a lot. It's getting more and more expensive <coughs> to run schools, to uh, treat people in hospitals. So we need to keep a strong, strong economy, because when we don't, we have trouble funding those uh, the schools and hospitals, and it's just so important. So what we are doing is balancing the budget, we're controlling spending, and we have a plan to get rid of the debt. And the debt is something that didn't exist when I was your age. My, my, my parents, my grandparents, and the, the parties that were in power uh, when I was uh, very young, they didn't leave a debt. They, they paid what they could afford. They spent what they could afford. In the last uh, 45 years or so, uh, governments uh, have gotten sidetracked and they're racking up debt and lots and lots of it. Well, my parents never left me a personal debt. And I'm sure your parents aren't going to leave you a personal debt. So it's not fair that government leaves a debt to the next generation to pay off. Because you have to work longer, harder, and you'll have less of what you earn for yourself because you'll have to be paying off a debt that other people accumulated. So we want to pay off the debt. Uh, and it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take several years. But there is an opportunity to do that. In the northern parts of British Columbia, we have the third richest natural gas reserves in the world. That is something that Asia wants really bad. They need clean energy. And so we have the ability to create what's called liquefied natural gas and export it to Asia, and they pay an awful lot for that. And over several years, we could conceivably not just pay down the debt, but get rid of it. And that would be the best thing I think any government could do for each and every one of you is to get rid of that debt because it's going to be so hard to fund all of those things that we want if that debt stays there and keeps growing. Okay, so there's lots and lots uh, that's associated with that and how we're going to do it and the, the investors and uh, all the jobs that are going to come about. But uh, I think that it's probably be uh, uh, maybe more productive if uh, you just ask some questions uh, and I'll answer, answer any, any question uh, that I'm able to answer. I, I don't necessarily uh, have all the answers all the time, but I'll do my, my very best. So just before we start this, um, just for the people who are listening 
live, I'm going to repeat your question so that everyone can hear. Okay? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Cheryl. Um, what are your opinions on the chlorine in Chilliwack's water? The question is, what are your opinions about the chlorine in Chilliwack in the water? Well, my personal opinion, and I don't like chlorine, uh, to be perfectly honest with you, my dogs won't drink it. I had to go and buy one of those water coolers uh, that you find in offices because my dogs wouldn't drink water out of the tap. Uh, once it was chlorinated. Uh, but the problem is that politicians have to be very careful about intruding on matters of, of, of health and public safety. We, we, don't, we don't want uh, a politician trying to get votes or trying to be popular by interfering. So we have something called Fraser Health and government stays over here, and Fraser Health is over there. And Fraser Health determined that there is a problem with our water supply, that there is a risk in the water supply. And uh, many of us don't like uh, the fact that our water is being chlorinated, and we certainly uh, wish it was otherwise, because Chilliwack has uh, some of the best water uh, on the planet, not just in the country, but on the planet. But it's, it's, very, it's very complex. Um, if something happened, and this, this would, be, would be terrible, but if something happened and someone got very sick, very, very sick, from water that we did not chlorinate, uh, it would be very expensive because the city would be sued and they would be liable uh, for that, uh, that harm that came to somebody and they were told to chlorinate ahead of time. So it's, it's something that I wish hadn't happened. I think it's unfortunate. Uh, I don't know that... Uh, government should be trying to tell health officials how to do their job, though. They, they are the experts. Thank you. AJ. So the question is, how do you feel about the incinerator and burning our garbage? I am 100% against the uh, Metro Vancouver plan for the incinerator. Uh, we have a problem in Chilliwack and much of the uh, rest of the Fraser Valley with air quality. And we have that problem because all of those hundreds of thousands of people that get in their cars in Vancouver and Surrey and they drive to work back and forth each day, uh, all of that exhaust drifts out here and it settles over, over Chilliwack. And it really is a problem. And many of you have seen sometimes when you can't even see the mountains uh, because it's so thick. So there are other ways to deal with waste, to deal with garbage. There's other technology. And there's certainly other locations where it's not going to impact air quality. So I oppose the, uh, the incinerator plan as it stands. Go. Do you agree with the pipeline? So the question is, do you agree with the pipeline from Alberta to British Columbia? The, the pipeline is a very controversial issue. Uh, every, every one of us uh, that gets in a car that uh, our parents drive, uh, that, uh, that fuel came from somewhere, and it probably came by pipeline. So the reality is that we do have to move uh, energy sources from one point to the other. The pipeline is, uh, is somewhat problematic, though, because uh, there may be some issues about it running across rivers and streams and posing an environmental hazard. So what my leader, Christy Clark, uh, has said, and what uh, our party has agreed to, is that there's five conditions that have to be met if any pipeline is going to proceed. The first one is that we have to have a very rigorous environmental review to determine if there is an environmental risk. Secondly, we have to have a response if there is an accident. We have to have a response on the land, and we have to have a response in the water. How would we deal with a spill? How would we deal uh, with an accident? Uh, fourth condition is that First Nations, Aboriginal people, must be part of the decision-making process about that pipeline. And the fifth decision is that it has to be economically 
uh, in British Columbia's interests, whether that means jobs in BC or whether that means uh, we get uh, a portion of the uh, royalties or the proceeds. So those five conditions have to be met before we're going to proceed uh, with any serious discussions about, uh, about the, uh, the pipeline. So right now we don't have that information and so it's resp the responsible thing to do is to wait until we do know all the facts before we, uh, we say yes or no to, to a project like that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are you my grandma, she usually picks up garbage every day. Is she, and are you, gonna, are you gonna like hire people to like clean up the road because all the garbage that people spread around town? So the question is, what will you do to address the garbage and litter in Chilliwack? Well, that's always a, a, a very sad thing to happen in a community. I, I lived just up the street from a school, and when the, the kids walk, uh, walk past, they're always throwing their Tim Hortons cups and their Slurpees cups uh, on my driveway. Uh, but uh, it's not up to the provincial government to uh, do that. That's something that is up to the city of Chilliwack. Uh, to uh, have uh, the, the garbage re uh, removal and garbage pickup. But more important, it's, it's something that we want to be mindful of, that none of us should be littering and we should all be doing our part to discourage uh, that type of stuff from happening because it's messy, it's ugly, and it's expensive to, for someone else to come and clean up. And we could probably use that money somewhere else. So it'd be, it'd be ideal if we could educate people to be a little more thoughtful and a little more mindful and not throw garbage away, wait until they get a little further down the road where there is a waste basket. Thank you. Jail. Um, what's, um, so what's the point of the pipeline? The question is, what is your opinion on adding more technology to schools? I uh, actually have been very involved in, uh, in, in the technology in education. I've, I've been teaching at the University of the Fraser Valley for 25 years. And in the last 10 years, I really haven't been in the classroom too much. What I've been doing is developing courses that you can, uh, you can take from, from, from anywhere from your computer. So it's online learning. And you don't have to attend class at a particular time. You don't have to uh, be, be in the classroom on Tuesdays at 10.30. And it allows people that are working, that are very busy, to continue their education. So I, I, I'm very uh, excited that I'm a part of that, uh, making uh, technology available so we can have more people uh, studying. Uh, last year, I had students uh, from England Switzerland, um, Australia, uh, in the past I've had from China and from Japan, and uh, Washington, Oregon, California, and Alberta taking my courses because we have that technology. Uh, and the nice thing about that is once you're, you have that all set up and it's running, it's a lot cheaper to deliver that course and to allow someone to study that subject area than it is to build more classrooms. So. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's something that uh, we're just beginning to uh, explore, and it's, uh, it's very exciting. Uh, another part of the technology we're very uh, excited about is uh, having textbooks online. So that, because uh, textbooks are very expensive for the schools, for students, and having the textbooks available on your computer uh, can save us all a lot of money. So we're doing a, an awful lot of work trying to make those available. So the question is, <clears throat> where will you spend the health care money? Well, that's a, a huge one because uh, health care consumes most of the money that we have. And it's only going to consume more. So we have to, we, we have to spread it around and we have to be smarter about how we, uh, how we use it. Uh, Obviously, one of the best places to invest in is prevention. If people don't get sick, then we're not spending as much uh, health care money treating them. Uh, we're very proud in British Columbia. We, we have the lowest rates of cancer in the country. We have the lowest rates of heart disease in the country. For people that do get cancer in British Columbia, 
or, or anywhere else, we have the highest survival rates. So we're, when, when, we're, when we're looking at how we spend our healthcare money, I'm not so interested in how much we're spending. I'm more interested in what are the results, what are the outcomes. And we seem to be doing very, very well in that uh, regard. We have the lowest rates of obesity, which is becoming a huge, huge problem and costing uh, uh, so much money in the healthcare budget across the country. And in British Columbia, we manage, we're managing to make that the lowest in Canada. So I'd like to see more of that, more put into prevention. Alita. How did you end up in the place you are? The question was, how did you end up in the place you are, I'm assuming as a candidate for the Liberal Party? In the uh, BC Liberal Party? I, uh, a number of years ago, I became somewhat discouraged with the direction of the BC Liberal Party. And I, I looked around and uh, I uh, actually had joined another party, um, the, the BC Conservatives. I, I, I've always considered myself a conservative. But names don't really matter that much. They're really just labels. And what happened was some people from the uh, BC Liberals uh, contacted me and uh, they said, you know, we, we know that uh, some mistakes have been made, and we know that some people have left the party, and we really would like you to come back. We'd really like to, to talk to you and get your input, how we can be a stronger party, how we can be more representative of more people. So I began those discussions uh, last year, and uh, I, I agreed that uh, under the new leader, Christy Clark, that uh, the BC Liberal Party was going to once again be the best possible choice to govern British Columbia, and uh, from from there, I was I had an opportunity to become a candidate because the the, the person who's always represented this riding for the last 12 years, uh, John Less, had decided to retire, so there was an opening for a new candidate, and I uh, I put my name forward. For that. Michael. Um, are you thinking of making the university and college cheaper or for your So is your plan to reduce the costs of students attending college and university in British Columbia? Right right now, British Columbia is right about in the middle of uh, the other provinces in terms of how much it costs to go to college and university. And it, it would be very unlikely we could make it cheaper. What we can do is try to cap how much it does cost. So right now, we have uh, put a cap of 2% increases on tuition. Uh, so it, it will probably get more expensive to go to school, but it will be a, a little bit at a time. Uh, the, the reality is that uh, it's very expensive to build universities and to, uh, to run universities and pay all those people that work at them, and uh, it's getting more expensive to do that all the time. So we need to offer as, uh, as, as best a university system as we can, and uh, that's, uh, that's very expensive. And one of the ways we fund that is, is through tuition. So we have a lot of programs to assist uh, low-income people uh, so that they can go to uh, university as, as well. Uh, there's lots of uh, scholarships, uh, there's grants, uh, there's, uh, there's co-op education. There's lots of ways to try to make it more affordable. Uh, one of the things that we're doing at the University of the Fraser Valley, I, I talked about earlier, is online textbooks. When you, when you sign up for uh, one of my courses, sometimes the textbooks will cost $400 just for one course. So if you're taking four or five courses, that can be an awful lot of money. So we're trying to get as many of those uh, textbooks available online so it's more affordable to, uh, to go to university. Thank you. Haley. Um, what will you be doing to reduce the first Columbia's what, the question is, what will you do to reduce British Columbia's ecological footprint? Well, that is, uh, 
a huge priority. One of the things that this government did was they became the first jurisdiction in North America to, to bring in a carbon tax, which was a, uh, a strategy to discourage people from driving and using as much uh, fossil fuel. Uh, it hasn't been perfect, but uh, it's, it's a model that uh, very much um, is, displays a commitment to reducing the, uh, the footprint. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, nothing is more, more, more important than our air and our water and the soil we grow our food in. Now, none of the other issues matter compared to those, because if we don't have clean water, clean air, and uh, good soil, uh, we really don't have much of anything else. So we have that uh, carbon tax uh, in place. Uh, that's one of the uh, one of the strategies. We're investing in new technology or green technology uh, all the time. Uh, there are financial incentives for uh, for for new companies, startup companies, uh, to conduct their business in a way that has a. Uh, a minimal, uh, a minimal footprint, but that's some, that's something that government can't just go out and do. Uh, you know, any, any, any time we hop in our car, we are adding to the footprint there. Uh, government can't tell people you can't drive, so that, that's something that uh, every one of us in this room uh, has a responsibility to be, uh, to be commit, committed to and doing our fair share. Go government can't do that all on its own. Four more questions. Okay. Anything? Then. Anything? Thank you. Yeah. Sarah. What do you plan on doing to reduce the amount of pollution? The question is, what do you plan to do to reduce the amount of pollution? Well, we uh, we have a program right now that <coughs> gives a financial rebate. Basically, we help you buy a smart car. Uh, if you buy uh, an electric car, a smart car, a hybrid car. Uh, we, the government will help pay some of that. So we, we're encouraging people to, uh, uh, to, to, to consider other forms of transportation. Uh, right now in Chilliwack, you, we're get seeing, and at the University of the Fraser Valley, we're having these charging stations so that people that buy electric cars uh, can actually uh, go from City Hall or downtown or out to the university and they can charge it there. Uh, but again, that's one of those things that uh, is, is, is difficult for government to do on its own. We, we can have requirements, uh, how, uh, how factories and how mills go about doing their business. Uh, but again, the, uh, driving the car is, uh, is a big part of it. And uh, you know, the more we have alternative opportunities to take transportation, to, bike, to public transportation or to bicycle, uh, the better off we'll all be in the long run. Thank you. Amy. Will you be able to make solar panel cars like what? Um, the question is, are you, as a party, interested in alternative forms of energy? Well, there's, that's already uh, already uh, happening in certain uh, industries. Um, but again, I, I'm not an expert in that. And the, the people that are experts uh, in, in, in alternative uh, power sources uh, they're the ones that, uh, that need to take the, uh, the lead with that. Uh, it's not up to government to tell people what type of car they should drive. What we need to do is uh, let people know that there are alternatives and what might be a better alternative for, uh, for you or for your family. Thank you. Seth. Um, what type of um, help or what do you do for the agriculture groups? Um, how will you help agriculture in British Columbia? Uh, one of the uh, announcements we uh, recently made was we're putting a, a lot of money into promoting a 50 mile and a 100 mile diet. So it's, it's, it's part of the uh, eat local, buy local program. So we're encouraging um, people to consume more local local food. We're, we have a program now that's just started where Fraser Valley dairy products are going to be more and more common uh, in school cafeterias. Uh, so there, 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 there's lots of uh, programs out there with the, uh, uh, with the marketing boards to, to encourage local consumption of, uh, of dairy and, uh, and other, uh, other food products in the Fraser Valley. 
Uh, one, one, one thing on that we just recently did was uh, the, the provincial government uh, freed up uh, a big uh, chunk of money to invest at the uh, University of the Fraser Valley in a uh, agricultural school of excellence to, to work on and to research ways to, uh, to improve agriculture in the Fraser Valley. Thank you. And the last question, just to be fair, I think we need a question on education. So if you have an education question, could you raise your hand? Justina? So the question is, will you increase the funding for our schools? Uh, we've been increasing the funding uh, for public education since we came, this government came to power, even though there's fewer students. Uh, next year, we anticipate uh, 6,700 fewer students attending public school in uh, British Columbia, and uh, the, the budget is staying the same. It's not, it's not going up, but it's, it's the same amount of money used to fund uh, fewer, uh, fewer students. I think, I think the number of students is, uh, uh, it's, it's been going down steadily for, uh, for about 10 years, and, uh, but it still costs more, so we, we have to uh, provide world-class education. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, on the, let's give a round of applause first to John Martin from the Labour Party. So, viewers online, that concludes our presentation for today. Um, John, on behalf of Central Elementary School and the schools that are streaming, I want to thank you for coming in. I want to thank you. And uh, helping our kids understand um, citizenship and uh, governance a little bit more. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Love the questions. And I, I'm so pleased to see uh, people taking uh, taking an interest in the political process. At the, at the end of the day, it does matter. It's, it's your future. Thank you so much for the invitation. I had a great time. So we, uh, we wish you well um, for the next week. And okay. um, we'll be sure to forward our results, which take place on Monday. Uh -huh. And let you know how they compare to the Chilliwack results. Absolutely. Thanks Thank so much. Again. Thanks Appreciate again. It. Round of applause, please, ladies and gentlemen.